What I want to show you today is my new uh, wheelbarrow harvester version 2. Those let me have seen my previous uh, video on uh, the wheelbarrow harvester and my harvesting every three weeks project. My harvest has been going every week, and this week's no exception. I'm harvesting uh, two trays a week, and the other one was a little labor intensive, even though I had an easy on and off handle and had to crank by hand. I still had to do all the worm separating and everything by hand. So what I did, I came up with a design. And I'll give you a real quick overview. Had a uh, 11,000 no load uh, RPM uh, grinder right here that you see right here. So what I did, I made a pulley. A little two inch pulley put on that. And I attached that to an eight inch pulley. So for, this is part of my, what I'm calling my speed reduction box. And what that does is uh, obviously reduces the uh, RPMs by four. And then if I look over in here, I'll try to turn it a little bit, what you see is more wooden gears and another pulley. I'll give you a bit, I'll show you what that looks like once I turn everything on. But long story short, when I go from a two inch pulley up to my eight and a quarter inch trommel I have a 135 to 1 speed reduction and I'll show you how it, how, how it works here in just a second and then finally I have a, a speed controller over here that I use unfortunately I tried just using that with the uh, with the uh, grinder with about up to here and I still had well 500 rpms or more it would have been a comp compost spreader instead of a uh, compost shifter or harvester. So I had to reduce it more. That's where that came in. And it sits right on top of a wheelbarrow. As you see, it locks in. If I need to, I can take it and set it on table. The edges that hold it up against the wheelbarrow also can work, uh, be utilized as feet. I have one there, over here, and then a long one on this side. And then on both sides here, I have a means of raising and lowering the outfeed for whatever needs. And I'm not going to go too much in detail on this. There's a separate link on this. I call it my warm harvesting cone, kind of similar to what they have on commercial models. And I want to give you a real quick view over here. It's interchangeable with wing nuts, so I can take it from this one put it on my quarter inch screen. I guess it's an eighth inch screen right here if I so desire. And then lastly, I just made a little stand right here with a, wood, one, one, with a half inch wooden dowel. A hole drilled at five degrees so it doesn't need any kind of clamping motion. Just a weight holds it in place. And then I use leftover sheet metal for my worm separator. I haven't tried this yet. Put this on uh, full setup and let's see how everything works out. Okay, I just finished the first tray. Hey, that's the second one there. This is my yield. I don't know if you can see it. Boy, that is some fine. That's a, that's like coffee grounds. Very fine, pure worm castings. The occasional cocoon. Off the screen. Did real well. Let's look outside. I moved the bed trays outside so you can get a better look. On the side for the sun. This was the uh, the waste side. I had about 15 worms, I'd say, fell on this side. Once I got adjusted, most of them were gone. 
And this is the other side. See, it's all in a nice pile. I moved out in the sun, so of course the worms are burying themselves. Let's see what we got here. That made for one easy worm separation. A little bit of humus, the light stuff that is able to get thrown over to the side. But I had these worms in one tray. That was in the bottom tray. So I think uh, my worm cone separator, um, I'm going to call it a success. It's definitely going to make my job a lot easier. And here you see my weekly harvest. As after two trays shifted through a 1 8 inch screen. So on the wet side now, I'll put it in the shed, let it dry out a little bit, then I'll bag it up in my uh, sandbags. Go with the other three sandbags I already have filled. I would guess right now we're looking at about a, a gallon and a half. Probably just a little under two gallons at the most. But that's in one week. Took three weeks to get this. And just before I bag it, since I am harvesting every so, so quick, I'll go through. If you can look right here, you might be able to see them. Camera doesn't focus too well. But I got a lot of cocoons in here. So I won't spend a whole lot of time, but I'll grab about a handful of them out. It takes about 15 minutes. Throw them on top of the tray. Give them enough time to hatch or else if I don't then eventually I'll run out of worms. My production will stop because six trays and averaging three to four weeks at the very most four weeks to a harvest is not enough time for the uh, cocoons to hatch. Hope this helps. Well now I got to get busy uh, throwing up two trays and putting them on my uh, compost bin or um, in my uh, worm factory setup. Thanks for joining and if you want to see how those are set up, that will be in a separate video, how to build a, a uh, quick harvest uh, worm bedding. Thank you.